Good afternoon, traders. This is Christian from Hertz Traffic and Trade Group, and it is Monday, December 28th. So, a whole bunch of things to talk about today. So, I'll try to talk quickly, but I've got some really interesting concepts, I think, to um, to get through today. And I think um, overall, use the word interesting a lot, but interesting, you know, very interesting price action for the day. So, number one, risk disclaimer, before we go through all these concepts, everything that I'm going to be talking about is for information purposes only, educational purposes, not giving out any advice or recommendations, anything like that. So, let's get into some of the things to kind of take away from today. And I worked on kind of a new section too that I was... Um, that I um, kind of came up with kind of midday, but I'll get to that in a second. So first of all, you know, we're kind of, um, you know, we had this gap up again today, uh, weekend gap up into, into Monday morning. And, you know, they these are not good trading days. They're not easy trade trading days, the gap up days, right? One of the things that you hear me talk about a lot in these videos is how the majority of the moves happen in the overnight session. You know, over time, when you look at overall performance, a lot of that is derived from the overnight market. It's just how it works. Let's, you know, rather than debate whether the market is rigged and all that, it's just how it works. Holding positions is a lot better for returns rather than trying to time intraday you know moves um, every day um, you could tr you could make a little bit of money day trading and so forth but really the the big piece of the cake is in the overnight session that said so when the market rips up like going into the open you know like a percent or you know close to a percent you know s p i think was up about 70 80 basis points so almost one percent going into the session those are the days where you kind of you what you try to do is take that money and put it in your pocket and for, and try not to really over day trade too much uh, because it's just it's harder because there's a lot of it welcomes profit taking to kind of come in for the day now overall we didn't really see too much of that in the large caps and there was actually some decent opportunities that I you know I capitalized on a little bit today and um, not all you know I, I didn't trade Apple today Apple was a really good one Disney was a really good one we'll go I'll go through those charts in a second but um, but yeah, overall, you know, when you're looking for day trade opportunities or, or uh, places to add risk, a lot of that comes, you know, a better time to do that do that is when the market um, starts the day down, right? If you're really looking to kind of put on positions versus take things off. So that's always my mentality is the first 15 minutes of the day, I try as much as I can to, to take uh, risk that I currently have on and take and take either positions off decide if I'm going to roll them and or um, yeah or leave it you know take targets right and I'll have to take the whole position off too um, so you know we'll talk a little you know I always like to give examples of that right so for example you know in the tr where's my trades channel Right. So that I, you know, unfortunately, I wasn't able to some of my positions, I wasn't really able to kind of go crazy with taking risk off in the first, you know, that first 15 minutes. Um, I took a, I kind of forced the target in Taiwan Semiconductor. I was trying to get eight dollars. Oh, there's a there's a headline out about uh, TAL education. I'll throw this in the news channel. All right, so I kind of forced a target in Taiwan Semiconductor a plan, which was a trade that I put on, uh, you know, a smaller trade from last week that I had on. Uh, I, you know, there was a nice positive broker note on um, on Anaplan. So, you know, this was one where I said, hey, you know, just go, you know, going back to what I just said, hey, let me take off the options. You know, the name was up to like 2% in the beginning of the day. And then I'll see if I, I'll see how the, how it kind of, um, handles that gap up and I didn't substitute into stock so sometimes I do that I take off the option and you know I get the nice bang bang for your buck quick trade and then I and then I look to add stock well I didn't do that um, you know I just took took the money and ran in this one right so so took you know somebody throws you a softball um, <laughs> you know like we got in the overnight session you know Take, you know, swing and, um, and, and, you know, don't get too greedy, right? And then if, you know, if, if it's a stand-up double, you know, maybe not always try to stretch it into to a, a triple 
or to a um, inside the park home run, right? So, you know, that, you know, there's a double, boom, right there, right? Um, next, I took off this light trade from last week. Um, this was a trade that I was looking at a breakout. Uh, I think that was the right thing to do. Still finished positive for the day, but I don't really like that candle. And this isn't a name that I trade a lot too. So I'm happy with, you know, not a huge gain, but, you know, I, I decided to take this thing off, right? Um, you know, and then a target in, you know, one of these SPAC names too. You know, again, my opinion on, on these SPAC names is you really have to size them correctly. You know, there's there's a bunch of, <laughs> there's a bunch of, you know, I don't want to say a bad word, but there's a bunch of novice traders or um, I, I don't know really what they're looking to accomplish saying that, th that they're like making huge money with all these SPACs. There's, there's no way that you could do that responsibly. Um, and in my opinion, these things are just too, uh, they're, they're too volatile to put a huge position on and any of these things. So all these people who are, who are jumping over backwards, doing victory laps on Twitter, the, I, most of the majority of what they're doing is is fake. So just keep that in mind. You really can't put on a big position in most of this stuff because one day they're ten dollars, another day they're you know they they may go from ten to fourteen dollars, then the next day they're back down to eight dollars. Right? We've seen this over and over. I was showing some examples of this thing. For example, like IPOC, which you hear a lot of people talking about. Yes, it's up big. It's up to seventeen bucks. But remember what it did back here too. You know, it went from you know ten dollars up to you know, 13 bucks. And then the next thing you know, it's down to down to eight bucks. FUBU is another one, right? That FinTwit was 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 all over saying, you know, this thing is the greatest thing in the world. 60 bucks down to 38. So all of these names you could participate in, in my opinion, because I'm not telling you what to do. I'm not giving advice, but you have to under you have to incorporate some type of volatility component um, to help your position size, because there's no way, in my in my opinion, if you're taking a large size, large position size in any of the stuff that is moving this fast, and if you're not taking targets, that's not really trading responsibly. That's more gambling than anything else. But that's what we have on Twitter, and you know, um, so I'll leave that at that, right? Because I've got a number of <laughs> I've got more important things to talk to talk about. Uh, but you know what Twitter is, right? It's it's a lot of made up crap. Um, so all these, so anyway, let, let me move forward. So that's always my game plan in the beginning of the day, because I'm already seven minutes into the video and we've just talked about that. Now, what happened in some of these other areas today? Well, we know that the small caps are really overbought, right? And we've talked about that now for the last week. In my opinion, it was a chance to kind of lighten up, you know, some of these things and, and just a number of areas were extended last week. I kind of said, hey, I don't want, want to be, you know, I like to be a little bit greedy, but, you know, um, let's be, the word that I use all the time is realistic, right? We know that the market ebbs and flows, right? It's not just going to go straight up all the time. So as this, you know, huge move in small caps has been, go has been going on, I've been taking money out of the market, right? And, and being responsible ab about it, right? Again, I still have skin in the game and I'll talk about that in a minute too, um, because a lot of the, some of the growth names really got hit um, pretty decently today. But again, we're not, you know, stone figures, right? We make adjustments as traders and take some take some profits in some things, especially in some names that, um, you know, have really run hard, right? Okay, so that's um that's basically what I talked about last, and you could go through a couple of last week's videos, and every day last week, you know, I was locking in more profits. Um, so I lightened up decently last week. I still have names that that cause me issues, right? So before we get into that. You know, just, you know, so this was interesting. By the way, small cops not even down, they're not even down that much, right? Down a third of a percent, not a big deal at all. How, however, I, you know, I've got a put position on an IWM. I think it could kind of come in a little bit further. I think it can maybe fill one of these gaps. You know, there's a lot of things that could take place in here, right? So I would be mindful of that, right? Also with this ARC ETF that saw, has been seeing some humongous, uh, inflows over the last, you know, basically for the for the month. This thing, I mean, look at what this ETF did today, down 2.4%. So again, I love the ETF. I love Kathy Wood, but just, 
you know, by me saying that the mar that this could kind of come in and take a little bit of a breather, that's not talking negative about anybody. It's just being realistic, right? So a lot of these names, they're very extended. If you look at the individual names that are in this ETF, let them come in a little bit, right? You're, everybody's going to be okay if they come in a little bit, right? So, <laughs> um, you know, coming into the 20 day moving out, and, you know, and again, I'm just guessing here, right? I'm not, I don't have any, uh, you know, inside information or, or anything programmed that's going to tell me where this thing is going to come in, but down 2.4%, I think this would be, this would kind of make sense, the 20 day moving average, and we'll see what happens. Maybe it goes a little bit further than that. We don't really know, but it's very, to me, toppy. Um, remember, like, what was the RSI in this thing? It was an 83, an 84. That's very, very hot, right? So let this cool off a little bit. And I'm going to talk about when to kind of press and when not to press in just a second. But I want to get through. Um, you know, besides that, the clean energy names really got hit. Again, they're due. They're all due for a pullback, guys. Um, you know, the, the biotechs have been running extremely hot, right? So again, thinking that things are, that these things are just going to continue to go straight up without ever seeing a pullback is completely unrealistic. And we've seen this happen before. In multiple months where we get a little bit of a pullback, we consolidate and then, you know, in a bull market, we push higher. Because again, remember, at the end of the day, the Fed still has the markets back. They're inserting li liquidity, but it doesn't mean the market can't pull back, right? So uh, keep that in the back of your mind, right? Um, so let's talk a little bit about a Santa Claus rally, right? You hear this nonstop. Oh, we're going to get a Santa Claus rally, right? Yes, yeah, so so the market is very, you know, there is some seasonality. There, there is definitely uh, some evidence behind the last week of the year and a little bit going into the beginning of January is pretty strong. However, one of the other things that people don't talk about, and again, all you have to do is Google this stuff. You don't really have to do too much research. Just Google Santa Claus rally, and you'll get this nice Investopedia, and it will talk about some things. What I know from experience is that sometimes the last week of the year, you will see underperformers outperform, right? You will see some of the unloved areas of the market outperform so it's not it's not always the market leaders that will continue to go up right and we talked about this in, in the weekend video like for instance um, there's some research that points to value stocks outperforming growth stocks oh my god value stocks everybody hates value stocks you know for a week these are the things that we try to go over in the weekend videos in the, in the member videos that I try to prepare um, members of Tribeca trade group for that oh my god you know, the value stocks could actually uh, outperform a little bit, you know, the horrors. <laughs> so, you know, so the banks, the energy stocks, right, that there is some seasonality there. So keep in mind, it's a short term effect. But if you're pressing into a whole bunch of growth names, thinking that that's what the, the Santa Claus rally is, um, it's not half the time. So it's important to kind of realize these things and to kind of know what you're doing. Um, you know, into into some seasonal, you know, big seasonal times of the year. All right. Um, you know, one other note here that I that I like to talk about is that when you lighten up on your risk a little bit, right? You're in such a better position to capitalize on the weakness. You're thinking a lot more clearly, right? You're not running around like a chicken with its head cut off because you've got all these positions that are going down, right? You're you're in a much better spot. So. You know, am I down to complete cash? No, I've got a couple things on, right? I've got, uh, you know, some things that got hit today, but, you know, that's okay to me um, because I, I don't have oversized positions and a little bit of volatility in my account is really not that big of a deal. I'm in some Palantir. It needs to hold 25. Did I add to it today? No, because I want to make sure it does hold 25, right? It's coming right into support. I got to see if that actually holds. SE, this is a position that I'm also in. Um, this thing fell 6.7%. Guys, this is what happens, right? It's the stairs up 
And in some of these names, it's been the elevator up, and it's going to be the elevator down too, right? There, there, when things come undone a little bit, um, you're going to see some big downside moves. It's not gentle, right? Especially the farther that you go up, sometimes the harder you're going to come down. So keep that in mind, because um, when I'm going to go over my next subject in just a second, um, let me just make sure that I got everything uh, that I wanted to. Yeah, we, so we talked about the Santa Claus rally. You kind of have to know what that means. Um, and all it takes is a two minute Google. Um, what else? Yeah, so, you know, even for growth, uh, you know, another chart that I wanted to look at. And guys, this is, I talked about this on Twitter last night too. So I also put this out not only for members, but I put this out um, you know, in terms of, um, you know, on, on Twitter as well. And, and one of the things that I said was last night was the small caps are up 10%. Um, you know, small cap growth is up 12.2%. So look at what the IWO did today. Not a big move, but down 1%. Doesn't it kind of feel like it could come, can correct just a little bit? Um, I think that would be okay. Now, again, you have to be careful asking for corrections because sometimes they're a little bit deeper than you may think that they're, um, you know, you know, than, you, than they might actually be. But, you know, I, I said that um, we could see some rotation to areas like semis, builders, transports, you know, things things of that nature. Um, and I also wrote about, where's, where's my next? Um, where, what can I see next? Oh, well, I can't, let's see. All right, maybe because I don't have that selected on Twitter. But um, let's go to this from last night. All right, here we go. So a couple quick observations. And then I said, you know, it would, it would be healthy for the extended areas to see a pullback, right? Seeing less, and I said, I'm seeing a little bit less of, of the strong setups going into this week, right? That's usually also a little bit of a clue that you that things are um, slowing down in terms of momentum, right? And I did cover more of this stuff in the in the weekend videos. Also, if you want to look at like a couple things underneath the hood, right? We like to look at market breadth, right? I know this is this is a talking point for a lot of people too, but if you look at this um, McClellan summation index, now this could flip around. Notice that you know right now it's got a bearish cross to it right something that we saw also remember like towards the end of august right and we ended up rallying for another week and then september right if we if we look at the s p chart right just to kind of overlay that a little bit right remember that we rallied all the way into september 2nd and then we basically spent three weeks going down right so these things you could kind of use as a little bit of a tool to say, hey, when these when this crosses over, sometimes it's a false signal and it and it uh, flips back into a bull. But for now, it's signaling that you've got something different going on, right? So you you could use that right to your advantage, make some adjustments. That's what I did last week a little bit, right? And that's helping me a little bit capitalize on some of those newer. Um, you know, new opportunities that I'm seeing on the tape, which I'll, I'll get to in just a second. But I just wanted to cover this. So remember, here's where this happened back. This was at the end of August. You had a little bit more of a rally. And then if you look at this, right, then we kind of got hit pretty decently, right, for a few weeks, right? So th this is not, um, you know, predicting that the same exact thing happens. But what I would look for is for this thing to either flip back around the next couple of days, so it's a short-lived pullback, or to kind of stay a little bit more defensive while you've got a bearish signal going on here, right? And again, notice what happened too in the middle of uh, October too, which was here. Remember, we rallied all the way to 1012, and then we spent a good couple of weeks down uh, before the election, and then obviously we've been up and to the right since since then, right? But, you know, these are things to kind of help. They're tools, right, to help. Again, price and trend for me, number one, but I will look at things like this to say, hey, there's something a little bit differently go different going on. I might, wanna, I might want to, I might want to be a little bit more defensive, right, or take some profits in some things. Okay, so that's that. Now, um, the next point, 
and then we'll talk about today's setups. But guys, like I think like this analysis, like I go over this, we do a Q&A um, session on Monday and Wednesday too. I like to look at individual stock setups, right? That's my bread and butter. But this stuff is important too because um, the reason why I spend a little bit more time going over this stuff is because I know what happens to most traders. They make money as the market goes up and then they give it all back as the market goes down, right? So you got to be able to lock in and, and kind of make some adjustments as, as you see different signals, right? So I put together this little section here, when to press and when to sit on your hands. Um, it was something that I was thinking about today because Amazon um, made a really nice move today. And, and I am looking for continuation in Amazon tomorrow. Especially now that we got this signal. Remember, Amazon's been doing nothing for the last couple months. So I got a break above value. I got someone to work with here. All right? We saw this in Apple um, a few weeks ago. And Apple you know, has been making a nice move here. Now, it hasn't gone in a perfect straight line. It's got, you know, it kind of went a little sideways once it got out of value, broke higher, um, continued higher, checked back a little bit, and then, you know, had a sideways day. So again, it hasn't been perfectly straight up in Apple. It's been a little bit of uh, backing and filling, even though it's been above value. So if we go back to this Amazon chart, maybe you get something similar, you know, to that. You know, if the market is a little bit volatile, maybe you get like an inside day here and there. But overall, this is the first move that we've seen above value. Really, you know, there was a false move here. Um, this didn't work here either. This was a false move here. So I like this chart a lot. And I like the volume too on the break higher. So I played this, um, you know, here's kind of what I did. I put on, um, we realized this. Uh, oh, and by the way, like Amazon is, is a name that I've gotten so many questions on in the last couple of weeks. What I said for this is to have a couple alerts set and wait for the price action to confirm the move, right? So, um, you know, I noticed a couple of things were moving today, like Facebook, uh, Microsoft was doing okay. And then I started to kind of look at, um, what Amazon was doing. So 1047, um, when Amazon was up uh, about, you know, a little bit more than a half a percent, I put this call spread on. Um, again, high risk because it's it's this week's call spread, but, you know, right away was taking targets. You know, um, $9 paid 590. I, I rolled some of the position out to the to a higher strike, right? But this is something here where it's doing something different where, you um, you know, and I don't have this one written down, but if it's, I do have something here. Um, if a name is working for you, I try to press and stay with a name for as long as you can, right? While it's doing something different until it stops doing something different. Uh, you know, we're going to be talking about on Wednesday, we've got a really nice webinar where we're going to be talking about some lessons from, from 2020, um, some, some success stories, uh, some things that I would have liked to that I would like to improve on in 2021. Really, a nice webinar that if you're going to be around trading in 2021, then this is one that you're not going to want to miss. I'm bringing on two people, um, two members of Tribeca Trade Group, so it's going to be a little bit of a panel session. We're going to go over um, some of our best trades. Uh, some some things that we wish we could have done over and what we're really concentrating on for 2021. So I can't wait for that. That's going to be on Wednesday. That is a member only webinar. And um, and then we're also taking, of course, uh, you know, questions for members ahead of time so that uh, we can fully answer those questions. But it should be a really, really nice uh you know, webinar to do right before 2021 starts to kind of get ready, you know, and um, and have your game plan set for the year. But one of which I think is a big thing for me is to kind of really stay on those names that are starting to break out and try to milk every profit from that name that is um, doing something different and is beginning to break out of a congestion zone. So that's something that I'll be, you'll hear me be talking about Amazon, a name that I have been not a fan of over the last couple months, but now um, I'm looking for, you know, we got a nice break out of value and I'm looking for some follow through. So um, we've got some levels to kind of watch, right? We've got a VPOC up here um, all the way up at 3447 and um, we'll see how it goes. And again, it doesn't necessarily mean it gets there in a straight line, but it's, I like the, the fact that it's doing something a little bit different. 
All right, I mentioned I would go over a couple. Well, I, t I talked about Apple, but Disney was one too that um, got going early on. So again, you know, a name that may not have been on the top of your list coming into today, but made a nice turn here. So, um, you know, after some digestion after this gap up, you know, that's what we want to see a lot of times is, um, you know, a decent move up, um, some sideways action, and then resolve to the upside. So very strong. All right, so let me get to these other bullet points here, right? So for me, um, what I was looking for coming into today, right? I always have things that I that I think, okay, right? I said I'm not seeing a ton of setups coming into today, um, but if we start to see, you know, one of my thoughts as you go back to that tweet that I sent out was, you know, we could either see a decent rotation on the tape, where we see some of the super high growth names pull back a little bit. And a move into some of the under-owned, under you know, unloved or value type names. What some of these rotations, right? Um, or um, the market continues to rage, of course, or the whole market pulls back a little bit. So I think we're kind of could be somewhere in the middle of these. Now, one of the groups that I was looking, um, right? So one of my theories, kind of coming into the week, was. Um, so the semiconductors. I wanted to see some nice performance out of the semiconductors. Well, we kind of got that in the beginning of the day, but many of them stalled. So it's a little bit of a to be to be continued here, right? But overall, um, I didn't really get what I was looking for, right? Taiwan Semiconductor, like I said, I kind of forced a target at the beginning of the day, finished in the green, but that's not the candle that I was really looking for. Same thing in, um, in MRVL, which was another one. Again, it doesn't mean that the, that this, these stocks are done or anything like that. They just didn't do what I wanted to do, what I wanted them to do today. So still holding the uptrend, but again, finished in the red. You know, gave back like a plus two percent day. Um, AMD still looks like it's not right. It's not turning the. It did not turn the corner. Something that I wanted to happen today. Um, this particular one, Nvidia, uh, I would be very cognizant of it's now it's testing this 515 level again so um, my opinion is on this um, the more a name tests a level it's eventually going to go through it so you want to see in video if you're bullish on this name get away from this 515 516 level and start to press to the upside but the more that this thing kind of leans into this I, I have a feeling um, that this thing may break Right, I would be, you know, my my head is saying probably there's a there's a 75% chance that this thing breaks and goes lower, and maybe a 25% chance that this thing hangs on. Regardless, I'll be watching it, and I don't have a trade on either way. But if it does break, what's to say I can't short this for a short term trade? All right. So, um, and then of course a couple couple interesting ones, um, Amba. Uh, made a new high today under heavy call activity, as well as this um, set of Taiwan uh, semiconductor, tower semiconductor. So there was some strength out of this name, out of this group, just not all the ones that I was looking for today. But that's okay. We can make some adjustments, and I traded some AMBA today. And this tower semiconductor, I'm not sure what's going on with this name. I kind of think it might be uh, you know, an acquisition play, but who knows? Maybe it's just um, you know retracing some of these levels. If you go back and look a couple years ago, because I traded this this tower semiconductor a couple weeks ago and I took profits in it, uh, but now it's kind of you know had a nice dip and maybe trying to power through again. Let's see if we could take out this um, recent highs. All right. Um, so the the main thing is if you didn't get what you were looking for then make make some adjustments, right? Don't just say, oh, I'll just try something different. Um, if you were looking for like a rotation on the tape and you didn't fully get it, you know, maybe it's going to be a different scenario than, than um, you know, than I, than which was my higher probability um, scenario that I outlined, which would be a rotation. We could also see it, uh, you know, a bunch of areas pull back. All right, so we talked about this one. In general, if a name is, is working for you, I try to press. Um, if a name is not working for you, um, again, this is one of the areas that I've been trying to improve upon 
in trading, right? We're, we all need to improve on different areas. We never, no trader ever gets to a point and says, that's it. Like, you know, I'm a black belt trader, right? I've gotten to it. I'm never going to make a mistake again, right? We all make mistakes and there's all things that we need to improve upon, right? One of the things I think is if a name is not working for you, sometimes instincts tell us, oh, I could get it cheaper, right? I, you know, today it's down 5%. Um, and you can get it cheaper. Now, it depends on your time frame. That may work if you've got a really long time frame, but if you're trading options and if you've got a shorter term horizon, um, that often may not work, right? Um, so um, what I have written down here is pay attention to what the name is telling you. If, it, if it's weak um, throughout the session and if no buyers are coming in, you may have more weakness, right? And it's not a time to kind of add to the position. Now, I did um, add to this position. I took a target in it earlier, so I left it on. But this is not what I want to see. For example, like this, this is not screaming to me to buy the dip. Why? Because it had no fight back today, right? If it's a, if it got caught up and somebody was selling it, what I want to see is this thing close off the lows and and show that somebody was there besides myself, right, and ins institutions buying the dip, right? We don't, we don't see that yet. Now, it's not to say that it can't recover, but I think just the chances of it are, you know, you always have to think about uh, things in terms of probability as a trader. There's just a lower chance that, you know, that this thing is going to bounce back tomorrow, right, because nobody was buying the, the dip today. Um, it closed on the lows. Shopify is another one. Um, and again, you could go up and down some of these names, but I like that Shopify is back into some support, but look where it closed on the absolute lows. So that tells me like hold off buying every single name on the dip, right? Give it a little bit more time to figure out if buyers are coming in, right? The institutional buyers, the ones that's going to support the market. I think that this would be a logical place for Shopify to stop, but who's to say that the market's going to be logical tomorrow? Right. Um, so that's kind of what I look to see uh, for a little bit of hints that buyers are coming back into the name. So um, the main thing here, and I'll just repeat, repeat this here, is just because a name is down, that doesn't mean you have to buy the dip. Right. Take your time. Be patient. Right. If, if it's, a, you know, it's been very rare where we get multiple pullback days, but they do happen. And if you adopt that strategy of just buying everything just because it's down, that could really um, hurt you, you know, in terms of the, your week, um, maybe even your month, by just going on buying sprees because things are down. Um, I think one of the lessons that every trader has to learn is just being a little bit more patient. Um, so again, it's one of the areas that I'm trying to improve on is pressing on names that have a signal and have momentum versus randomly just buying the dip just because a name is down. All right, so it's a 2020 lesson. And um, we're going to talk more about these things on Wednesday. So this video, like I, I thought it would be, is, is a little bit longer than expected. It's about 32 minutes long. So thanks for, um, for staying through to today's video. And I hope these kind of things help you. You know, I could go over chart setups and that kind of thing all day long. But really, um, number one, being a risk manager is most important in this game. Um, the trade setups, we do an amazing job at. Sorry, I'm giving myself a pat on the back. But that's only part of the game. All right, guys. Um, have a great night, and I'll see you tomorrow.